Good day, my wonderful viewers. It's time for another educational video talking about American comedy and politics. No one cares. Why are you here? Remember, I get to come to your presentation and be mean to you. Oh. Okay, then. Just start already. Oh, my God. Alright, so today, we will be talking about the Donald Trump Trucker Rally, a skit made by Saturday Night Live. Now, you will need to see the view of the skit on YouTube before watching the rest of this, but, because, you know, I can't show it due to copyright reasons. I've already shown my class the parts that we will be discussing, but for the viewers at home, or whatever, a link to the video will be down in the description, that way you will understand what's going on. So come back after that. Okay, so now that we've all viewed the clips, or unlike my class, I've actually been forced to watch them. I will now be discussing one of the sweet six questions about what we will be looking at. So direct your attention to the smart board. So, the question we'll be answering, how and why is a social group represented in a particular way? Well, mainly I think they are representing what the internet calls enraged millennials. So these are a type of stereotype that the internet's declared that they say they get mad about everything you say to them, no matter what it is. In fact, Here's an example of what most people stereotype them to be like. Hey bro, what's up? Excuse me? Did you just assume my gender? Whoa, chill out. I was just- That's offensive towards those who don't have homes or who are not fortunate enough to afford heat. <sighs> Never mind. <coughs> now to answer the question, you see that they make Trump act like how an enraged millennial would act, but unlike normal, he's being offended about stuff that most enraged millennials want to happen. So it's almost like he's the opposite of it. So, now to analyze this skit in all its fun glory, we will look at context, audience, purpose, and stylistic features of it. We're gonna start by talking about the context of the skit. So if you didn't know, the whole skit was based off an incident that happened in real life when Trump told Mike Pence to leave a football game, the Indiana Colts to be exact. And so we have a tweet that he posted, and we'll be looking at that And thanks to the courtesy of the New York Times information. I asked Vice President Pence to leave the stadium if any players kneel disrespecting our country. I am proud of him and Second Lady Karen. That tweet is offensive. I don't give a flying pig about your opinion, okay? We're now going to look at what the New York Times said. That's just his opinion. But the document really helps to show the whole original issue by showing tweets sent by Pence saying why he left the Colts game exactly. I left today's Colts game because the President of the United States and I will not dignify any event that disrespects our soldiers, our flag, or our national anthem. Now for sure, we all know the intended audience v to view this is people who enjoy staying up late and watching TV like me. But was that the main audience it was meant to be? Yeah. I mean like, honestly, I feel like it is, but I need to actually say some kind of social group. I would have to make the educated guess and say it was meant for those who just flat out hate Trump. And probably the secondary audience would probably be those like to hear funny jokes about Trump and his shenanigans and it influenced the content because it was the at the moment one of the biggest issues around you know with the whole flag kneeling issues happening is that, is that still actually an issue I'm not sure I haven't heard much about it recently I guess we're on to recent times about the whole government shutdown and Tide Pods Okay, so the main reason 
this skit was made was, well, to make a joke about the whole issue about the time Pence was being told to leave the Colts game by Trump. But then just for the heck of it, they decided to exaggerate and add other situations like the whole ordeal with the basketball kneeling, Starbucks coffee not saying Merry Christmas, and gay weddings. So, for the stylistic features in this, the writers use language that people would understand, like, get out of there. In other examples, in order to grab the attention of others, use examples of normal things like, you know, me and you have every day, or, you know, do, like Starbucks and the weddings. The people actually know what those are, so, you know, people will be on a one-on-one -on -one level with that. And so I guess that's everything. Hopefully. Hey, you! I have one last thing to ask. Do. You. Know. The way. That meme is dead and... Holy... Oh no! No the way! No the way! Put the on the dopey avatar To get together with your friends And follow girls to the very end No the way! No the way! Stand together, knuckles long For Uganda, we're coming strong To set our ick in a tribe free Action is coming! No the way, no the way Here we come, rough like the rest of them For hard as nails, no hard to tell We'll break them down, solid or frail No the way, no the way Better stand together, knuckles out